Did anyone else just hear that? I mean, to me, it sounded like a global sigh of relief when NVIDIA reported earnings and beat the expectations. But is that enough? Is it enough to prevent a deeper pullback in the broad market indexes? That's the million dollar question, and the answer is looking like, yeah, it's enough. But I'll be honest, there are a few things that still have my attention. So let's take a look through the data points and build a logical game plan for the rest of this week. As always, check out the links listed down below in the description, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you've not already done so, and stay tuned until the end of today's show. I've got two additional trade ideas to share with you that you won't want to miss, and both of them do involve AI. With that said, let's jump right into the charts. We'll kick things off on the SPY daily time frame chart. The first question that we always ask is what's going on from a trend point of view? We have lows, higher lows, consecutive higher lows, and the potential for higher lows on the Tuesday and Wednesday session. The reason I say potential is because we're pulling back from equal highs, not a higher high in the trend sequence. Now, if we can get continuation of this trend, that would be achieved by breaking out over both hammer highs, looking for an equal high, and then potentially follow through. Because remember, an equal high at 503 would really represent the improper end of the auction with all of these very precise touches. That's generally speaking not how an all-time high is going to be set. You want to see excess at the highs, not some sort of whimper here where we just back off of it incrementally every single time. And lo and behold, the first step of that process, gapping up out of the two-bar range, is taking place because of NVIDIA's positive report of earnings, right? So right now, the post-market session is trading around 501. That's implying a pretty big gap up outside of the two bar range and certainly towards these equal highs. So is it likely that the trend will remain up? The answer is absolutely. Let's say that we weren't gapping up though. Let's just look at the candles and take them at face value. We certainly have hammer-esque style bars where in the lower wicks, we know that the buyers stepped up, the buyers stepped up. On Tuesday's session, we closed in the upper third of the daily range. And on today's session, we closed at the highs of the daily range. And in both bars, we looked underneath the key daily level. We we talked about on Saturday at 496, but neither of the daily bars were able to close underneath. So for that reason, I wouldn't really say that we have strong sellers present and therefore the risk of a double top reversal being something like this, a breakdown through the equal low at 491.50 to bring in a lower low, the risk of that has been dramatically reduced, especially with the gap up via NVIDIA earnings. Now, unless there's a major wrench thrown in the mix based on the unemployment claims tomorrow morning, maybe at 8.30, it looks very likely that there's an opportunity for a gap fill reversal to produce a bar to bar higher low, and then an equal high up here, as we've already mentioned, should yield a break of 503 because it's the improper end of the the auction, even if it's just for a repair, and then we come back down underneath, we'll take that in stride. But the short term indications of this daily time frame chart are that the buyers completely remain in control. The hourly time frame chart actually reveals some very interesting nuances here because on Tuesday's gap down, it's a successful gap down, right? We open, the buyers attempt to close the gap, but the buyers fail there. They also fail to find price acceptance inside of Friday's range. So it's successful in the sense that the sellers get a gap and go. We get a push to the downside and another afternoon break for a lower low. So at that point, we're technically in an hourly downtrend and it's only this end of day push that gets us back up and over the daily level at 496. So we would say sellers were initiative on Tuesday. The same thing could be said on today's Wednesday morning session. Look at the consolidation underneath the low, right? So prior support is now acting as resistance in the morning session today, Wednesday. And then we get this afternoon break before maybe it looks like Nvidia earnings were leaked. And then the market rips back to the upside for the daily close up and over 496. So once again, sellers more initiative on the Tuesday and Wednesday morning sessions is important to understand because if new money sellers were entering the market here, this gap up based on Nvidia earnings is gonna leave them in a world of hurt. So that adds to the buying pressure, right? If shorts are going to squeeze out, if they're going to close out, it adds buying pressure to this market. So a couple of ideas become top of mind. If we're opening around 501, loosely, that's where we're trading in the post-market right 
right now. And we get any sort of pullback. Tuesday's high is incredibly important here at 498.25. The next possible level is the full gap close to the Wednesday high of day right here, where you can see we had resistance on that first Tuesday lower high. That would be using prior resistance as newfound support and also starting to look more so like a double bottom. It's a lower low double bottom, but we would be respecting the neckline of that pattern for an hourly trend reversal back in the upward direction, right? So the idea once again is even on a massive gap close, something that does this, if we can find buyers over 497, I would say that the bulls remain on parade here. Any sort of gap and go. So if we open over again, close to 501, this is bullish first higher low pullback over an upward sloping view app or some sort of subsequent break and higher low over the 503 level. We want prior resistance, prior resistance to now act as newfound support. And those are the potential long entries. If you're looking for a short tomorrow morning, there's nothing saying that the gap fade isn't a decent idea. You can take some of this range here for a potential short if NVIDIA, the one stock causing the gap, is also going to yield some sort of gap fade where it moves against the direction of the move higher, right? It moves lower on that open. So watching out for that. But once again, I would not overstay my welcome based on the analysis we just performed that said these shorts are in a world of hurt. If they're going to squeeze out, if they're looking for a break even exit, they'll turn into buyers to cover their position. If we're over 497 looking for this, then we have lows, higher lows, higher lows, we flip back into an hourly uptrend, and we're aiming in the upward direction. The strongest thing the sellers could do is really open up here, get a full move inside of this range. Now, if anything, we just have trapped buyers who failed to produce the higher low over the top of the range. Again, 497 would be your key for that. Any acceptance back in this range, and now all of a sudden I'm thinking, okay, here we go. Now we sort of get more of a Man Ray style pattern, right? Where this turns into a double top up here. Maybe this is a lower high on the Nvidia gap up tomorrow morning. It's actually more appropriately up here, but you get the idea. It's a lower high if we fade instantly and get back down into this range. Equal low gets dangerous, break this on the daily chart, and now you're in a downtrend. So you have the main idea ideas that we're looking for on the hourly chart. And once again, I would really argue uh, that the short squeeze based on the sellers being initiative in here is really top of mind. But let's take some additional confluence from the Fibonacci's, for example, coming from the uh, last higher low up to the top, right? The 38.2 Fibonacci is technically at the Tuesday high. So if we open on this gap up and go gap fill reversal to the Tuesday high, right? That would be over the 38.2 classifying it as bullish consolidation or bullish acceptance in this overall range. If we drop underneath it, not the end of the world, the 50% retracement, it's very dim in here, but it is confluence with that neckline, 497 is the level. And things start to get dangerous around the 61.8. I would really argue just underneath 497, chopping around in this range, this is in jeopardy for the equal low at the 61.8. But the main takeaway from the Fibonacci perspective is really the 38.2 confluence here with the Tuesday high. The last thing I'll leave you with on the hourly is the intraday anchored view apps. And what we can see here is massive confluence at the 497. Your anchored view app from back here, which was a higher low, the top of the move, the bottom of this pullback, as well as the breakdown, trying to get as close as possible to these highs, right? Even if we were to back that one off by an hour, let's do that together here. Let's go instead of 1430, let's go 1330. Let's add that in. And even that is still right around that zone, right? So 497, as long as we're over that on a potential gap fill reversal, I would tend to think that the buyers keep their upper hand. Market internals are always supporting evidence exhibit A. If you're not familiar with this screen, check out the video tutorial in the top right hand corner. When we look at the screen and dashboard as a whole, it's very difficult to say that the bears have any overwhelming edge. And as we break it down by component, we can clearly see that neither of the sessions Tuesday or Wednesday had substantial volume outflows, therefore net flows on the week are not substantial in the outward direction. If we look at the advanced decline line on Tuesday, it's closer to the zero line as compared to trend lower zone. And on today's session, it quite literally chops back and forth through the zero line, very neutral. In terms of the index score, this is in forward testing, but I do find it very interesting that into the afternoon, we did have a pretty decent read to the downside, negative 10, negative 12, negative 13. And then this is not just a fluke with the end of day rally. This measures 25 individual data points outside of the ES outside of the NICE at the exchange level. And this flips positive to a six 
into the afternoon. So is it just an end of day pump? It wouldn't really seem likely. This is really, you know, across the market as a whole, things really did improve into that closing bell. The cumulative tick speaks for itself. Sure, they are red, but they're hardly substantial. Negative 1,400-ish by the time the bell rings, and substantial reads are negative 5,000. We're just not even there. So at this point, based on the internals dashboard, yes, it does appear as though sellers maybe got ahead of themselves on the early stages of the Tuesday and Wednesday session. And here's Exhibit B, as always, the market profile. If you're not familiar with this screen, check out the video tutorial in the top right-hand corner. Very interesting on the Tuesday session how we have value more so centered in the profile. Same thing with the point of control. It drifts ever so slightly in the downward direction today, Wednesday. Point of control also centered in the individual session. Great excess on the lows on Tuesday. Same thing on today's Wednesday session. What we really want to focus on are the single prints in A period here and the spike from the A period period over here. What this would suggest to me is that if we were to get the full gap close, the M period high, basically the spike top, is going to be the base of your A period single prints from the Tuesday session. This is not a spike because it did not happen into the close, it was the open. But if we can hold over that level, and in the ES, this is 5,000, this is 49.95, we've talked about this nonstop. If we can hold that level, that's the ideal place where these sellers who are involved in the value areas from the Tuesday and Wednesday session continue to feel the pressure by being underwater on their positions. It's all also the full gap fill reversal, right? We've already talked about this, but the profile based on these A and M period single prints from Tuesday and Wednesday just reinforced the idea that a gap fill reversal holding over 5,000 in the ES is constructive and likely puts the pressure on for a squeeze back in the upward direction. Changing gears to the QQQ on the daily time frame chart, what do we see here from a trend point of view? Unlike the S&Ps, we are pulling back from a lower high and it actually looks like we've got ourselves a lower low. So is this a very nuanced daily downtrend? The answer is absolutely. But Nvidia saves the day with the intention of a gap up for tomorrow morning, again, barring any funny business from the unemployment claims. We have 431.75s, let's call it 432s, gapping up and over the Tuesday high of day, and most importantly, the level at 429.15. Remember that this was a massive line in the sand. We had prior rejections, and we know that this setup is a pie in the sky, inverted head and shoulders. We didn't hold it once. We were given a second chance, and then we broke back down underneath. So this gap up tomorrow morning over that level at 429.15 is really a lifesaver from NVIDIA. And for that reason, there's a couple of things that need to take place on the daily time frame if you're gonna maintain a bullish edge. And you can probably assume that that's gonna involve a reversal up and over that level. 429.15 cannot be traded below. Otherwise, this just turns into a very convoluted daily balance range, right? What do we know? What's a classic rule? Do not diddle in the middle. If we're not trading well, if we're not finding buyers up against 429.15, I would not necessarily want to think about daily trend being as important in this particular zone. I would tend to side more so with a balance range forming, which might be okay. Just as a reminder, let's go up to a weekly time frame chart here. Any sort of balance up here just builds out a flag. We're definitely in a weekly uptrend. Bringing it back on down to the daily and taking a closer look, I do want to explore the lower wicks of the Tuesday and Wednesday session. I do still think it's fair to say that the buyers have responded quite quite well and meaningfully off of these levels. The most interesting thing is that the Wednesday session looks underneath the Tuesday low, makes a new lower low, finds support directly at the lower edge of the weekly expected move, and then closes back inside and above this balance low from back here. So these lows, these highs, this low from back here, as well as the Tuesday low. You have to think if stronger sellers were going to get involved in this market, if everybody on the buy side was you know, fed up with price and you're going to say, you know what, we're going to throw in the towel, it's very reasonable that a lower high could have been produced intraday underneath that 423.50, and suddenly all of this acts as overhead supply. It simply was not the case based on today's close, and once again, the intention is for a gap up closer to that 432 level. The idea would be on the daily to maintain a bullish edge, you're looking for that higher low over 
for 29.15. If we're underneath it, I think it's all bets off here. We flip back to a very neutral trend, a very sloppy trend here, and maybe even get a daily downtrend continuation move with high, lower high, depending on where the gap is here, could offer a lower high, right? That would not be unreasonable. Some sort of breakdown underneath 429.15. I think it's game on looking for potential shorts there or just maintaining more of a neutral edge. And then the bearish edge really steps in underneath 423.50. As we mentioned, all of this would turn into overhead supply. Let's drop it on down to the hourly time frame chart. Take a look at some of the nuances over here. So again, the intended open is around, let's just call it 432, 431.50s around this zone here. Just like in the ES, just like in the S&P 500 SPY Cash ETF, you can see that Tuesday was a successful gap and go, pushed in the downward direction. All the consolidation was on the lows, even more so than the S&P 500. Same thing with today's Wednesday open, pushing to the downside into the afternoon. And notice that the sellers actually maintain the edge into this afternoon's close by remaining below this key level at 426.25, right? The bottom of this flag that broke out and the lows from the Tuesday gap down and CPIs flush, if you will, from last week. So this gap up from NVIDIA is really acting as a last uh, sort of extension of the olive branch, if you will, and we need to stay over that 429.15. If we slip below, again, we've already made the argument on the daily how this offers a potential lower high and the trade would be for a short to get here, retesting this big level. And then of course, we're just looking for the equal low over time. That is the downside trade that the sellers are looking out for. The buyers want to see a couple of things. Buy side activity is really hinging upon a higher low over that 429.15, looking for upward lift. If you can spot the entry here, that's great. You can go entry, stop, and target would be closer to the equal highs. That would be these highs up here at 434.65. The better long entry, if you're looking for the daily downtrend to ultimately break, you just want to breach that 434.65, higher low above, and then the all-time high is back on the table as a target, right? That would be at 438 50. All right. So from there, that might start to be like maybe lower low double bottom, something that offers like that. It's a bit of a stretch in terms of pattern recognition, but nonetheless, that's the main idea. If it's a gap and go higher low over that 434.65. Let's bring out the Fibonacci's just to be sort of, uh, you know, congruent with what we've done so far in the ES and the S&P. If we bring them in from this point of view, uh, we are gapping up and over that 38.2, which I do find interesting, but I would actually like to take it from the high down to the low that was made on today's session and see how much of that we are ultimately retracing. So based on what we have right now, 431.50 as let's call it, we are underneath the 61.8. So is it logical that some sell side pressure could step in there for a deeper pullback to get to and test that 429.15? That totally seems reasonable based on this Fibonacci perspective when we take it from the top down to the bottom instead of up, you know, from down here up to the top. So watching that as confluence, once again, that number is 432.75. The odds would dramatically increase for the all-time high test if we could get price acceptance over the 61.8. And the 38.2, not for nothing, is not so far off that 429.15. I would still really use the 429.15 as the major line in the sand, but below that, just like odds would increase over the 61.8 for the 100% retracement, the odds would just increase for continued bearish acceptance acceptance if we're below that 38.2. So watching those levels as confluence, once again, 429.15 and 432.75, we'll take those off and we'll throw on the anchored view app set just to see what we've got there. And would you look at that? You can't make this stuff up. It's beautiful. Uh, higher lows over 429.15. They do respect the anchored view app set. So something that gaps up here, right? Pulls back does that, that is looking pretty darn good. So this really, to me, is the all eyes on level into tomorrow morning's open 429.15, 429.15. One more time, 429.15. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ internals. A little bit more bearish over here. We did not get individual sessions that breached, uh, you know, substantial volume outflows, but the net flows on the week are closer to substantial outflows. It's not as closely clinging to the zero line here uh, into the afternoon reads. The advanced decline line also a bit more bearish, getting closer to the the trend lower zone. And one of the comments from the Saturday update video was, hey, if you're looking for weakness, the NASDAQ is the place to look. And the internals are certainly confirming that based on what we've seen so far. The cumulative builds, although not nasty like what we had over here on the Tuesday CPI gap down from last week, they were building in the downward direction a little bit more substantially than what we had over in the S&P 500. So once again, there is more of a sell side edge in the NASDAQ. If you're looking for weakness, you want NVIDIA to close the gap and you're probably looking for shorts in your NQ futures or QQQ as your ETF option. Here's the NASDAQ market profile on the NQ futures. 
I just want to reinforce the idea of the A period single prints from back here. There's very, very little volume at price. So if we were to get some sort of pullback, uh, you really want to see price hold over as a as general line in the sand, 17.6. Right. And what that would do is basically, you know, imply that the people involved in these value areas, very similar concept to the ES and the S&P 500, right? Those shorts are going to be underwater as long as we're over 17.6. What do we know is the better line in the sand based on all of our interactions out of the uh, out of the NQ? 17.777. And let's finish things up with the IWM Russell 2000 and the small caps on a daily time frame chart. And you know what they say, a rising tide lifts all boats. And even the small caps are benefiting from the NVIDIA move in the post market, getting closer to the 199 level, not all the way there, which is a small concern because 199 on the daily time frame chart is a huge structural level, right? If this is going to truly play out as a double bottom for a trend reversal back in the upward direction, if it's going to cement our weekly higher low, which we've been talking about for a number of weeks now, we really have to get over that neckline at 199. And I can currently see it as a threat, right? We're just not quite there, even with the help of NVIDIA. If this turns into consolidation and acceptance under 199, starts to raise some red flags that this was just a failed breakout. We were even given a second chance opportunity on the heels of CPI. Any consolidation or continued acceptance below kind of opens the door in my eyes for more of a weekly double top. We won't jump the gun, don't get me wrong, and we would want to be patient for a breakdown under 190 to truly call it a weekly double top, but it starts to become more of a realized threat the more time we spend underneath. Once again, that magic number at 199. Some bullish things that are happening here, worth at least acknowledging though, that we do have lows, higher lows, higher lows, and higher lows or attempted higher lows with the daily hammer candle. Right off the lower edge of this week's expected move, daily 50 SMA is also offering confluence. And as we've talked about in the past, this 196 level is just oh so stubborn. 196.50 is roughly. If we can hold that, it's a really great indication that all of the attempts that failed back here were at least for something. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a wild amount of volatility in this particular box. And if we're just opening and trading around 199, you might not have the best edge until we get a firm push away from the midpoint here or a firm push away from the midpoint here. So I think the IWM daily time frame chart really leaves a little bit to be desired, but I would start looking at 199 more so through the lens of a threat and acting as a risk. And if it resolves to the upside, the higher low wants to be above that level, then we would be a bit more confident in lows, higher lows, higher lows, right? Daily trend continuation back up towards the equal highs around 205. The best thing for the weekly chart would be a breakout up and over that level for a move to start range doubling the monthly range that we've been stuck in for at this point coming up on about a year. Let's go on over to an hourly chart here. See what else we can learn about the price action. And you can see more of a downtrend on the Tuesday and Wednesday session here. Uh, we know that NVIDIA is not going to have as much impact on the small caps here. So it's even pretty amazing that 199 is trading in the post market. I would be very mindful, again, of a gap fill reversal, offering some possibility of a very loose inverted head and shoulders, maybe something that looks like this. But I would want to see the clearance of the 199 level. And even, you know, to be very confident, I think that the lower high on a gap fill reversal is also a threat. So I would watch for $200.75 here out of small caps. And this is one of those small cracks in the armor that I was mentioning in the intro there that has my attention. The fact that the Russell was actually trending below 199 does not give me necessarily a warm and fuzzy feeling on the inside. And we know that NVIDIA, we know that the tech sector is not going to swoop in and completely save the day. It's nice what's happening now in the post market, but we shouldn't rely on that. And the price structure is not technically as constructive as as it could be with a hold over 199. The best thing that could have happened on Tuesday would have been an open here that immediately pushed back in the upward direction. And then your daily higher low was over the neckline retest at 199, simply not the case, and we'll take it in stride. So being very open-minded to small caps based on what we have here, let's go ahead and bring out our Fibonacci's from the CPI gap down low up to the most recent high. And this sort of tells us that we're actually in that no man's land, right? We're in no man's land here. The 50%, you know, retracement of the move, you don't want to diddle in the middle, right? So 199s become pretty difficult to trade around, especially if we just open on the level. We'd really want to see an opening drive to the upside, opening drive to the downside. Then we start to learn more and how that may impact the S&P as a market index as well. So Russell leaves a little bit to be desired.
desired as we've clearly made our point. Let's move along and drop in the intraday anchored view apps. Again, just beautiful how all this stuff marries up 199 as the key level is going to continue to be your key watch over here. We'll move along to the internals out of the Russell. You can see substantial volume outflows on Monday, or excuse me, Tuesday, not so much on Wednesday. The advanced decline line is weak, but not as weak as the NASDAQ. And the same comment here with our cumulative builds. Overall, I do think for these reasons, specifically the volume outflows on Tuesday, the, I would say that these are weaker internals generally than what we saw on the S&P side of the market. The, the perceived weakness out of small caps, again, is the larger threat uh, I could see if NVIDIA earnings just completely fade the gap, if tech is like, hey, it's great, we had one last party, and then everything continues to move in the downward direction. We'll get to the core list in just a moment. Let's finish up the small caps here with the market profile. Last thing to point out is just the great excess low in L period here. We did not produce an M period spike. And if we take a closer look, right, we're still just opening or the intent is to open inside of that Tuesday range, which you can see smack inside the midpoint of the value area there, really not making as much progress in the upward direction, even though there's a loose sort of gap up implication here. The best thing that the Russell futures could do is get up and over 2020. That's going to be roughly the equivalent of 199 on the cash side of the market. Once again, that number 2020 in the RTY futures. Let's take a look now at the weekly performance of our S&P sectors because some red flags do certainly start to emerge here when we think about sector posture. Leading the pack are utilities up 1.44%, as we know, lightweight as well as D for defensive. Just underneath is real estate as well as energy. At the bottom of the barrel, it's the SMH semiconductors, XLK tech sector, the heaviest weight risk on sector for the S&P. And then the XLV, it is D for defensive, but as we know, it's the second heaviest weighted sector by market cap. So posture wise, we're all backwards and it's not really the biggest concern yet because we did technically pull back for the Tuesday and Wednesday session. We were making at least on a bar to bar count perspective, high, lower, high, lower, high, low, lower, low, lower, low. So definitely a pullback and reasonable to see some sort of rotation as that's happening. But if this is not reversed via some sort of gap up, so if the index gaps up, goes gap fill reversal and then tries to bring us an equal high here. And that move is brought to you by utilities. It's brought to you by real estate and energy. Oh boy, that is a huge red flag posture wise. I would not look to be as aggressive participating in a move in the upward direction. Let's check in on the structural charts and see what's happening from that point of view. So although utilities is at the top of the list, we're definitely still in a daily downtrend here. If we take a look at real estate, it's just chopping around sideways in this range. Not much to say about that particular chart. Next up is energy. Energy trying to break out for the second time of the inverted head and shoulders neckline over 85.50. And although this is lightweight, we know that it acts more so as a proxy for oil and global demand for oil sort of speaks to economic stability or health, if you will. So the breakout here is not necessarily bearish out of energy. Next up would be the XLF, what's happening in financials. Really constructive looking chart, to be honest with you. This range break in the upward direction, finding a higher low based on the gap down from Tuesday day session equal uh, sort of range if you will on today's Wednesday session sets up a two bar range if we can break this in the upward direction that would help add to the risk on nature of the market move so a potential hypothetical for the end of the week is that financials break out of this range they creep higher in the list and then the XLK also creeps higher based on Nvidia's gap up that would be a much healthier posture for the sectors if we're trying to participate on the long side near these all-time highs in the S&P next up we've got XLY for consumer discretionary. Again, think about ranges here. If this is going to break the balance range in the upward direction, that would certainly help more of the risk on feel for the broad market. As of right now, neutral as we remain in the range. Looks like NVIDIA is trying to help it out, uh, but nothing crazy here in the post market. Next up, XLP, what's going on with consumer staples, D for defensive, lightweight in nature, producing an equal high. So if this were to pull back, not the end of the world for the S&P, as long as the slack can continue to get picked up by a breakout in the XLY, the XLF maybe sees continuation out of the two-day range and the XLK SMH sort of combo, if you will, moves higher off of the NVIDIA earnings move. Next up, we've got industrials, new all-time highs on uh, last week's session, just consolidating some of those gains as of right now, mild pullback, nothing bearish to say about this chart. Next up is materials, the lightest weight sector for the market. So if it breaks out over this, it will be meaningful uh, making a new swing high. It's also going to be breaking out of a range high. If we take a look at a weekly time frame chart right there, 
this as a long-standing range, if we can clear that, these are the moments, right? When we're dealing with really lightweight sectors, this is the moment that really matters. If we can clear a big portion of a range and then get substantial follow-through over time, don't forget, although it's a lightweight sector, upward pressure is still upward pressure, and it speaks to at least materials being quite literally constructive in the economy, right? Next up, we've got communications. What's going on with comms? Let's drop it back down to a daily time frame chart here balance range trying to find buyers on today's session via the hammer candle off the bottom end as long as we can hold up over 78.30 nothing bearish to say on the daily time frame chart if anything bullish rotation back up to the top of the range keeps the S&Ps looking good even if we were to break down higher low could be found here but of course this breakdown underneath 78.30 would imply probably some weakness carrying over to the S&P itself next up we have the SMH likely to gap up what's the after hours after hours is trading 204 Ooh, big spread there 74 by 19. So somewhere in this range, let's just loosely map out something like this, right? So if we're gapping up to that area, any issues out of the SMH daily structure, the answer is absolutely not, right? If this was going to offer a double top, right? Underneath your neckline, that's where things get dangerous. If we're opening up here, that is certainly not a threat. Any sort of equal high looks good. A failure to close the gap below would indicate that we have weak sellers. So if you notice that tomorrow, failed gap close below, then an equal high up here, that would be an indication that yes, we are looking for a break. New all-time highs out of semis. Very difficult to say bearish things if that's taking place in the SMH. Again, if this doesn't happen, if NVIDIA fades its entire gap, if the SMH fades the entire gap and we find ourselves back down here, and the broad market, the SPY itself, is making a run for that all-time high, big red flag, right, just to continue to play out the situations, that would be where we do not want to participate in the all-time high breakout. Next up is going to be the XLK. What do we see in terms of the tech sector? Uh, the gap up is bringing us to 202.50s roughly, so 202.50s somewhere in here, uh, back up and over the bottom of this, this, as well as this from in the past, any sort of higher low there. Again, partial gap, the reversal would be top of mind over $200.65 is looking really solid. Anything that continues to consolidate, so a deeper pullback to close the gap, Gap and just chopping around like this, very difficult to say anything more than just, you know, daily consolidation, weekly consolidation range at that point, maybe weekly bull flag. If you were to add in some more context here, this is going to be very similar to like our S&P and even NASDAQ charts, right? Any consolidation up here, so the gap up is loosely that line right in the midpoint of the flag. Any continued consolidation, again, weekly and higher timeframes, really not in jeopardy of any larger breakdowns or bearish deterioration. Next up is the XLV all-time highs. Let's go back down to the daily though and take a closer look. Uh, so all-time high, pulling back, you know, higher low, certainly on the table over the previous all-time high. 143.42 is the number on that one. Good to go here. Not much to say uh, in terms of bearish nature. So I think the main takeaway sector-wise is just the leadership as we're approaching the new all-time high in the S&P based on this gap. We really need to see the sectors flip in terms of posture if we're going to be confident about that. If we take a look at the ratio grid, here's a video tutorial in the top right-hand corner. If you're not familiar with this screen, again, somewhat likely that this is subject to change for tomorrow morning's open based on NVIDIA's earnings, but this is a concern, right? This is a concern. Financials are playing nicely as they broke that balance range. There was that strong recovery up and over the still upward sloping 50 SMA out of the ratio. So this is looking good, but it's not really enough to counterbalance what's happening in the heaviest weight risk on sector, the tech sector here. So really interesting to see how this stuff all resolves tomorrow morning uh, on the sort of regular trading hours for NVIDIA's gap. The XLY discretionary wants to break up and over this flat top and recapture the 50 SMA. Hasn't done it yet. XLI looks okay. Communications and eh, neutral. This is where we start to get some concerns. And again, this is just exactly a reference of the posture that we're seeing over here. Notice that your XLP is coming close to a 50 SMA. Utilities are curling higher. Energy is trying to break. And again, this is more of an issue from a weighting perspective. Upward pressure is still upward pressure. But posture wise, again, dialing back some of these bullish expectations near the all time high, unless this changes tomorrow. There's a lot riding on tomorrow session. Let's take a look at the XLK over the SHY and a lot of these similar concerns emerge. Deeper pullback unfolding here, technically off of a lower high. Can we hold the 50 SMA? That would be the next big test. Or the gap up tomorrow is just going to yield some sort of move up there and we're sort of saved, if you will. And yes, NVIDIA would save the day if it holds its gap up. Next up, XLK, XLU. Deeper pullback to the 50 SMA needs to offer one of these, right? There are a couple of instances in the past where we saw a little bit of a mild pullback, then we got all the way to the 50 
right? So want to hold that up here, uh, any sort of lower highs rejecting. So let's say we poke through this type of look that becomes much more concerning from a posture and risk on nature point of view for our market. Next up, we've got the XLY XLP. So apples to apples coming back down to retest that 238 level right here. It's got to stay above. No ifs, ands, or buts about this one. Uh, in a picture perfect world, it would have stayed over the 50 SMA, even as of right now, a little bit more neutral on this particular ratio. And because it's apples to apples, not something like a government backed bond versus the XLK, for example, this I would take as a much firmer data point as to say like, okay, if this breaks down here, okay, still not adding up to be fully risk on in the S&P as an index. So it really requires taking a deeper look, you know, underneath the curtain, if you will, underneath the hood uh, at some of these sector relationships to sort of understand why it may not be the best all time high approach that we're uh, coming into based on NVIDIA's gap up. Next up, SMH over the XLV needs to hold that 50 SMA uh, because both of these were slightly down, or I shouldn't say the SMH was slightly down, but because they were both down, uh, tomorrow will be very interesting if healthcare continues to deteriorate, but the semis really, you know, take that NVIDIA gap up and run with it, this is likely going to outperform big time. So you're going to see a huge V-shaped recovery here out of this particular ratio back in the risk on favored direction. Next up is going to be our dollar. Let's take a look directly at the dollar pulling back here. That is bullish for equities down below. Does gold agree? It would tend to say yes. I know that it's slightly higher off of that 2000. We talked about that as potential support. We take a look at silver. Any early indications here? Yes, there are. This is worth pointing out, right? For gold, we know that silver has acted as a leader. And because we have not broken out over that neckline, you get one more opportunity for a higher low. It's got to turn around tomorrow and then maybe get a break back in the upward direction. That would help gold also move higher and in theory, put downward pressure on the dollar, alleviating some of the headwinds down here in the equities market. So watching that relationship specifically out of silver, gold is not all that helpful inside the midpoint of its range. If we move along and take a look at the 10 year interest rate, this is another threat. This is another one of those data points that's starting to creep up as a red flag. The largest sort of read that we've been talking about as a concern is at 4.33 in the 10 year. And as we know, this really comes from the weekly time frame chart. Previous resistance now wants to act as resistance now that we've broken it and it did not provide support above what the bulls wanted to see at least interest rate bulls which i don't know if any of those things uh, if that's even a, a term right does anybody want a higher mortgage rate i don't know do you certainly not me uh but interest rate bulls really would have wanted to see something that looks like this uh, if you were uh, you know, looking for higher rates. And it's just, you know, as long as we're underneath that 43.33, we're okay. But the daily chart, as we were just looking at, really implies, you can see this consolidation here, the continued upward pressure. Uh, if unemployment claims come in, you know, way better than the expectation and the labor market continues to look fine, it's likely higher for longer. And we know that based on the inverted ZT, we can just move directly on over to the, uh, you know, inverted two-year yield, basically. And you'll see that the futures are higher. What would this suggest? That Jerome Powell is going to stick to his guns and say, yeah, we're higher for longer. I don't know why you guys thought you were going to get six rate cuts in 2024. We're all the way down to four at this point in time. And the SEP only outlines three at most, more likely just two rate cuts. So let's move on over to the tracker tool and just get a sense for what's happening over here. You'll already see that the odds are basically cemented for the March timeframe meeting. Uh, very unlikely for a cut then. And these odds even creeped up on today's session after the close. Why would they have crept up? Because NVIDIA's gap up ultimately loosened financial conditions. As the market continues to rip in the upward direction, it's unwinding some of the work that Jay Powell has ultimately done. So in my eyes, the market's pricing that in and saying, all right, you know, if, if the market's going to continue to hold up here, make new all-time highs, we're not going to get those cuts, right? Jerome Powell is going to want to continue to keep a more restrictive policy. If we take a look at the calendar, it's been a pretty quiet week, nothing big. We know that Monday was a holiday. We got the FOMC meeting minutes uh, this afternoon, just a recap of the meeting from January. Unemployment claims are the big deal for tomorrow morning session 830. We're expecting 217,000 versus the 212,000 prior. As long as we're underneath 250,000, really not any red flag uh, out of the labor market. So all good on that front. Nothing to really pay attention to. A couple more Fed speakers into the end of day there, especially Waller at 735 Eastern time. Uh, you know, pajama traders might want to watch out for that one. We're free on Friday with nothing going on here. So we will uh, take that in stride and look for the market to play freely, if you will, without activities from outside catalyst next up earnings calendar we know it was all about nvidia after the close today really not much else to talk about if you want some honorable mentions maybe block uh, after the close on Thursday. That's Square, the old SQ, right? Carvana, again, lower tier tech stuff. I wouldn't even, you know, Carvana doesn't even really fall into that. Nuantix, maybe. 
Uh, but that's it. I mean, Nicola, you want some popcorn that's before the open on Thursday, a little bit early uh, for me at least to be eating popcorn. I don't know about you, uh, but we'll move back on over to the platform and finish up our look through the risk appetite here. Uh, before we do so, let me just uh, bring up the financial conditions that we were just referencing. Here they are. And you'll notice that when this is moving in the downward direction, that would reference loosening financial conditions. And NVIDIA's big gap up is likely going to continue to put downward pressure on this particular read. It comes in monthly. So, you know, we're not looking for this thing to do anything crazy, but definitely going to continue to put downward pressure based on the NVIDIA gap up. Let's get back on over to risk appetite. Here's the TLT ratio to the S&P, certainly moving in the downward direction, not really doing anything impressive here. Uh, it certainly would not speak to a flight to safety trade unfolding. Bonds do continue to creep in the upward direction. I'm really most interested in seeing how these respond to any uh, more concrete Fed commentary as to when the first cut is coming in. Uh, the longer that these stay in uptrends, you know, we were still building the case and we can continue to build the case based on credit spreads that it's not yet sort of a flight to safety or like, oh my goodness, let's really favor the shorter end of the curve. Because you can see credit spreads are fine, but you really don't want those things moving in the upward direction that the way that they are. So we're keeping an eye on it, but uh, until credit spreads start to suggest otherwise, wouldn't really call it a risk off indication. Let's take a look at the HYG high yield in isolation. It is continuing to offer some sort of negative divergence more so to what the market has done. Small equal high, you could say out of the S&Ps, uh, but you're still getting this higher low phenomenon as we've already described, whereas the HYG produced some sort of lower low. Uh, maybe you get this as a higher low, possibly, uh, but slightly divergent, telling us to still keep an open mind about potential pullbacks or just you know cautious of all time high breakouts in the equities market down below, the high yield uh, junk bonds are not in agreement with that. Let's move along and take a look at Bitcoin. It's clearly ripping in the upward direction, consolidating some of the gains. This would speak to a stronger risk appetite for financial instruments, not one-to-one -one with the market, of course, but overall, again, financial appetite for risk, absolutely, with Bitcoin higher. Here are some slight concerns. If we take a look at the breadth, new highs versus lows, sharp tick in the downward direction. As we know, uh, it'll become more concerning when it gets negative in the early stages of a recovery. Recovery. We don't have to have blockbuster reads, but the sharp move lower does have me somewhat you know, concerned or at least highly attentive to how this resolves into the end of this week. We'll see if the NVIDIA gap up uh, does anything to sort of quell some of those fears. If we look at the SPX A200R, it's definitely sideways up here. So no issues out of this one, well over the 50% mark. If we look at the SPX A50R, stocks trading over the 50 SMA, this is a bit more comfortably uh, bouncing off of that 50% mark. So to me, that would speak to decency uh, in terms of, you know, a small data point supportive of the bullish narrative we've sort of put forth. I think that it's it's bullish with a hint of like caution at the all time high, basically. And when is it not really? Uh, let's move along and take a look at the RSP. When uh, we see this, you know, holding up at these highs as the market's holding up at these highs with a gap up out of NVIDIA, you know, it, it's very difficult to say that the market's a short. I think if anything, as we continue to walk through the data points, even if you're not sold on the all time high breakout because of the posture here, when the RSP looks like this compared to the weighted down below, at least promise me that you're not going to go out there trying to short all time highs because you must you think that the market needs to go to hell in a handbasket. Not the case when the RSP is holding up at these levels. QQQE, the NASDAQ, as we've been talking about for the past couple of weeks, is more so aligned with the equal weight. So no concerns out of that one. And the industrials versus transports is still divergent with transports pulling back more aggressively and industrials holding that new all time high consolidation up here at the tippity top. Let's kill it now with uh, the VIX and uh, volatility, you'll notice that we are starting to creep higher. So as volatility creeps higher, generally speaking, when volatility is expanding, you're looking for the market to have some more wild swings. Uh, so just keep in mind, if the VIX does firmly accept over 15, stops will likely have to loosen up, but your targets should also be a little bit larger. So just keep that in mind as we're trading near the all-time highs. And let's uh, finish along with the VIX continuing sort of a small sequence of higher lows. So volatility, again, making sense that it's creeping higher up and over 15 out of the VIX itself. If we look at volatility futures, they are still in a deep contango, not threatening any sort of backwardation. I mean, the zero mark is so far away here. Nine versus 30 day VIX is still fine. Notice that your one day VIX aggressively is in the upward direction. It's my belief that this is likely going to come back down. And the reason for that really hinges upon what we know about NVIDIA. Let's just go over to the beast. Speaking of, I want to bring up 
up this particular study set over here. Let's go over to sets and let's bring up our option selling. Uh, let's try that one out for size. And there we go. That's exactly what we want. So our implied volatility rank was through the roof, right? And as and if this can continue to tick in the downward direction, now that the number is ultimately out, implied volatility will not only crush on the options chain, but it's my belief that this will probably help just everybody holding their breath, waiting for this one big moment in the market. It'll probably help our one day VIX trick, you know, trickle back down in the downward direction, uh, as well as just the VIX itself sort of quell some of those fears here and maybe come back down more comfortably underneath 15. So is volatility an issue? I would say no. Now that Nvidia earnings are in the rearview mirror and they happen to go just swimmingly. Let's finish up tonight's session with a run through of our core list of companies. Apple is up first on the chopping block from a daily perspective. We're on the hourly chart, by the way, daily perspective, though, you could imagine how these are lower highs. And it's certainly possible to find a lower high on the daily anywhere underneath 187.50. If we take a closer look at the hourly chart, how might we get to 187.50? Well, this as a potential double bottom is going to trigger based on the sympathy effect, if you will, from Nvidia earnings. We're opening over that neckline at 182.50. So if we're opening here, the idea would be higher low gap fill reversal, anything over 182.50 looking for upside. First big hurdle is at 184, right? Prior support, prior support, then turning to rejection, rejection, daily 200 SMA here in green as well will be meeting us for confluence. So 184 is the next big battleground. And then after that, that's where you get the larger move into uh, that rejection at the 187.50, right? So your lower high turning this into a rejection, right? Boom, boom. There's your daily lower high. But for now, in the immediate time frame, if this is going to offer double bottom, it's all about this on the Thursday session, higher lows for a gap fill reversal over 182.50. You could even continue to play this out as an inverted man ray pattern, right? Something that does this, there is uh, your, ooh, that's, that's actually backwards. Let's go like this. Then let's go like this. There we go. Now he's looking better. And here is his right shoulder, right? So something that does that is also acceptable. And then a break would be up and over 184 to retest that 187.50. If it's just straight up consolidation, so let's say we fall back down into the range. Obviously, you're just looking for a daily breakdown underneath 180.25. Let's go back to a daily time frame chart just so you can see the magnitude of that threat. If we break down under 180.25, it's really not much here until we come into this area at 173.75. Let's move along and take a look at Softy. How are we doing here? Uh, after hours, we are 404.60 by 85, so loosely around the breakdown point. I'm not thrilled uh, about that. I would prefer to see a stronger gap up over the level, um, and that would be a better long, obviously. And the better short is opening just below. A little bit of a rally to maybe sympathize with NVIDIA and then fading off of this as a daily head and shoulders neckline, right? So here is the pattern, then your lower high beneath that neckline. Again, this loose 404.50, 402.75 zone. Let's take it on down to the hourly chart right? So some sort of rejection in the zone makes a whole lot of sense there. And again, in the after hours, we're trading just a bit north of that 404.50. It's uh, 60 by 85 here. So loosely in this area, if we can get a rejection of that. I would think that this is a very attractive breakdown underneath 399. You could also look for this as a possible entry right here uh, as a short to get there in the first place. A number of different ideas start to emerge if we see downside pressure beneath that 404.50, the bottom of this as the range after the gap down sort of around the time frame of the dividend. But as we know, that was really the damage dealt from the CPI move. So if you're going to be a bull, what would that leave us with? You just want to see buyers continue to step up and likely price acceptance inside of this range. As long as we're accepting over 404.50, there's this small opportunity to think of this as look below and fail. But really, you've already doubled the range in the downward direction. So that target is complete. I would not think, you know, we need to rotate towards the top. It would be the next structural target because we don't really have much else to go off of in here. Uh, but it's the idea of the trade, the spirit of the trade is not purely look below and fail, right? The better long would probably be patience for something that does this, setting up a very classic inverted head and shoulders. There you go. Over the neckline closes the gap into 41470. Moving along, what do we see out of Google? Google as an inverted head and shoulders candidate. There you have it. Are we getting any sympathy? Yes, we are. 144s in the post market right now, which is right at this level. This one leaves almost a little bit to be desired as well, just because you <laughs> 
you know, what do we do? We see opening drive to the upside, opening drive to the downside. Gap fill reversal to the downside is interesting, but then is it a rejection off of 144? Like that's the risk I see out of Google, for example. Uh, so even if we do go gap fill reversal, I would tend to think that this is a big deal just because this really strikes me as a failure to play catch up with the broad market and the AI sort of mania rally. It was one of the only names, as we know, aside from Tesla uh, and Apple, that gapped down big time on earnings and applied to, and tried to play catch up with the AI cohort. It just it's not able to do it, right? So this sort of gap fill reversal lower high at 144 to me is more important of a threat. Uh, if we do get opening drive, I would really want to see price acceptance over the level or just some sort of open slightly below. Let's say it fades off a little bit before the open tomorrow. Opening below, rallying above and higher low. That's a possible entry just because we can at least manage our risk in a more firm fashion. Let's continue along and talk about Amazon added to the Dow this morning. Uh, so that was an interesting catalyst. Nonetheless, it was not enough to break up and over that 170.25. So continued consolidation in here is just very neutral. Uh, any sympathy based on the NVIDIA? Yes, 170.20 is the current uh, output in the post market. So right at the breakout point. What I would prefer to see, break higher low above, confirm that we're out of the range and not just some sort of test of the level like what we saw at the highs from today. I would be more so inclined to take Amazon on the long side because of this failure to really accept through the lower wick of that first attempted breakdown under the bottom of the earnings range, if you will. So if the sellers really had an upper hand here in Amazon, if they were going to make something of the breakdown on the Tuesday session, why was there not like acceptance to start working their way through that gap simply did not take place? Now, again, I'm not looking at today's session and saying, oh my goodness, that was such a strong display of strength from the buyers. It's absolutely not the case in that upper wick, but with the intended open up here, any consolidation for higher lows, I'm thinking about trapped sellers. I'm thinking about disappointed sellers. I'm thinking about longs buying into the story of, hey, this is getting added to the Dow. It's going to be a strong component now, right? So all of those, you know, sort of catalysts, if you will, would tend to at least lead me to believe that this is a stronger opportunity here for more of an upside lift. Let's take a look at the beast. We've already sort of talked about it from an implied volatility perspective. But one thing I do want to show you is just the uh, the measured move that needed to be hit from an options payout point of view. Um, we were looking at a $68 expected move, right? $68 from loosely the opening print or the uh, previous day's close on Tuesday here. And that would have meant you needed to see price up and over 762 or under 626.75 if you're going to get paid out on calls or if you're going to get paid out on puts. As of right now, we're just right in the expected move. So uh, 735s brings us right back up towards those all-time highs. You know, I'm not going to say that the calls are going to be completely blown. The puts definitely will be, obviously. Um, but it's going to be very difficult, right? If you, if you thought you were going to wake up to this huge payday because you bought NVIDIA calls, might not be the case. That implied volatility crush we just displayed while we were talking about VIX and volatility is going to come and kind of haunt you, if you will, especially if you have expiration for Friday. Um, but nonetheless, watching for these equal highs, it would appear as though the auction ended improperly, right? Uh, so that sort of left some structure not with the best uh, ending, if you will. So 471.25 or 741.25, goodness, this is getting these numbers all sorts of mixed up uh, now that we're trading at such a high price. Anything up here that breaks, I'd be thinking about blue sky territories. This is just an options expectation. I would not think of uh, 762 as a firm potential area of resistance. That's just going to give us an idea of uh, who's, who's getting paid and who's not for Friday. Let's move along and talk about meta. Really, I would say NVIDIA, let the dust settle. Let the dust settle. My first thought would not be to try to fade the gap. I would not try to play the big move to the upside. I would let the dust settle. I would let me just go back to the chart there for a moment. I think we uh, didn't give this one as much as it deserved. Uh, so opening up here, let the dust settle. And I mean, not looking for that not looking for this and like 800 in the blink of an eye. I think that you want to be patient. You want to watch for things to unfold in here. If we can get a break high or low over that 741.25, great. We'll trade in the upside. If we start slipping underneath 722, I still think that that's a key level. And there was just a very clear display of that on Tuesday, right? As soon as we broke down from it, these buyers late to the party is overhead supply. Goodness. Adios, right? So I think the levels are clear, 741, 722. Next up, let's get on track for Meta. What's going on with Metaverse? Uh, not much. Don't diddle in the middle. It's as simple as that out of this one. Leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, are we participating in the upside? Yes, we are. Uh, 474. 474 gets us up and out of the midpoint range here. So the idea would just be higher low pullbacks. 
Higher low pullbacks trade back up towards the top of the range at 482 and take it in stride from there. Really not looking for anything aggressive to the downside on Meta until it breaks into this gap. Next up, we've got Tesla. How is Tesla faring? Uh, anything interesting here? 196.18 by 20. So that would bring us uh, not technically on a huge gap up, but certainly over the neckline of the inverted head and shoulders. So trying to remain constructive here. Not the cleanest retest, and I could start to imagine how this really starts to look better over 198.25. We're trading for the full gap close at 206. So watching that out of Tesla, again, we're opening somewhere in this area. Breaks, higher lows here, trying to align more so with the bullish trade. I would be neutral through this range in here. And if the bears are really going to make something happen, show me the lower high that sticks underneath 193. If that takes place, okay, I'll change my tone. But as of right now, trying to more so align with the stronger daily reversal back to the upside. Next up, we've got Netflix and then two AI related trade ideas for you. And then we're out of here. What do we see out of Netflix? Uh, possibility still for a daily higher low. Remember that this was a higher high, right? This is a higher high pulling back, certainly an opportunity for low, higher low, and potential higher low. As long as we stay over that 569 level, uh, how are we doing here with the AI mania? So 576. 576. It's not really all that much. And to no surprise, I mean, Netflix is certainly not nearly to the magnitude of the Magnificent Seven, but you get the idea. If we can hold up over that 569, trying to align with giving the buyers the benefit of the doubt, treat this as a range. And the best trade for the longs will be back over on a higher low, 579.20. The shorts, eh, you might have something in here, but you know, I think you can all tell exactly where my head's at. The better short is a breakdown underneath 558.25, lower high, and then we'll trade for the low of the earnings gap up. Two ideas, and then we're out of here. PANW is the name of the game. Palo Alto Networks, uh, of course, got absolutely demolished on earnings ahead of NVIDIA. But what I do find interesting about this chart is this daily retest level paired with the daily 200 SMA. That's exactly the low of today's session. Um, after the close, we are getting a little bit of sympathy back in the upward direction. We're at least not dead on the lows here. And I don't necessarily think that this trade has to unfold over the span of one or two trading days into the end of this week, but it should be on your radar. Can we hold this zone at 258.58? Uh, and as a matter of fact, you guys know rule number two up here in the penthouse is round numbers only. So let's go 50. There we have it. If we can hold that, I would tend to think over time, can we get some sort of correction back in the upward direction? It doesn't have to be anything massive. We're not looking for the gap to close in one day, but trying to align more so with the bullish trade if we can get acceptance over today's high. Today's high, to give you the exact number, is at 275.98. 275.98. So Palo Alto keeping it on radar for this big area to potentially hold on the retest of the breakout and the whole AI mania, right? This is really the beginning of the AI mania 2.0. And we've unwound all of that out of Palo Alto. And NVIDIA has said, no, we're going to hold it all. We're going to hold it all. We're going to trade back up to the all-time highs, basically. So we'll see if this wants to play catch up and align more so with what, <coughs> excuse me, what NVIDIA is doing. ADBE Adobe is going to uh, finish us off here. And Adobe is interesting because of, again, it's sort of a loosely related AI play. Earnings are further out on this one, and it's playing much more nicely with the NVIDIA earnings. You can see in the post market, we're 544 by 545. So about a dollar spread, but nonetheless, that's out of the two bar range to the upside. If we can retrace some of this thin structure, I'm treating this as a scalp. We're breaking the two day range. We're looking for the possible lower high retest of the double top neckline from a weekly point of view. If there's your double top Here's your neckline, 568 retest through the thin structure breakdown of what would that have been Friday of last week? Let's take a look there, right? You can see even intraday, we had that little test at 568. So if we can clear this, there's your sort of double bottom on the hourly, higher lows, trading for this, and then really, really assessing the chart at 568. I really want you to be aware of the threat of the daily time frame. This is overhead supply is likely going to be no joke. So on a retest there, do not overstay your welcome on the long side. You might trim half the position. You might trim three quarters of the position. See if we can get a poke into it. If not, just be prepared to use a trailing stop or manage risk in some way. I'm not going to tell you exactly what you need to do. That's up to you and your psychology, but you get the idea here and the spirit of Adobe's counter trend move through the thin structure. That's going to do it for today's episode of the Midweek Market Update. It is a late one. I appreciate you coming out to the show, especially on an NVIDIA holiday earnings report. Uh, I was going to say Eve, but it's truly just the holiday itself. Uh, we will have the unemployment report tomorrow morning at 8.30, so come out to the pre-market prep. It is live at 8.15 here on the channel. Everybody's welcome. Coffee and donuts on me. If you want something different, bring it, but bring enough for everybody. And with that said, I wish you a green trading week.